And it's seven o'clock, so I'm going to start the session now. The session is being recorded. Um, I hope you're all doing well. OK, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much for confirming that. OK, so tonight we are going to look at the LM curve. It's in learning unit four. Um, so I just want to give some background. It's quite a short section, so I thought I'll do some revision just to make the time worth your while. So um, the learning units in this model work like building blocks. So you are unable to start a learning unit if you didn't understand the content of the preceding learning unit. So in learning unit two, you did the goods market. In learning unit three, you did the financial market. And then now in learning unit four, these two markets are coming together in the ISLM model. And tonight we are all supposed to be only looking at the LM model, but like I said, I'm going to do a little bit of revision so that we all know what's going on by the time that we get to this part. So just like one step back, I feel with this module, it's often such a lot of detail that you can often get bogged down with the detail and you forget what you are doing. So macroeconomics deals with the economy as a whole. So it's not the decisions and behaviors of individual con consumers and households and firms. And what we are doing in this model is we're trying to use theoretical models with set assumptions to determine the level of output and income and the impact of your policies, your fiscal and monetary policy on the level of output and income. So we are developing a macroeconomic model to explain change in the real GDP, your level of output and income by applying your policies. OK, so let's just do a recap of your goods market. So in the goods market, um, the model shows that how the demand for goods is determined, um, how the demand for goods determines the level of output and income in the economy. So what you did there, you had your demand equation and that the equation said the demand for goods is equal to your consumer spending, investment spending and government spending. And then we moved on to expand this equation to get um, you broke all these components down into the, um, the smaller parts that made them up. And we were able to simplify the demand equation that it exists of autonomous spending and your induced spending. And then we moved forward even further and we we went to calculate the equilibrium in the goods market so that space where your demand for goods is equal to your level of output and income and this is the equation that we used for the equilibrium in the goods market and so it this equation tells you that the equilibrium level of output and income is a multiple of autonomous spending and this portion was the multiplier then you are also able to um, draw the demand equation on the on a diagram, remembering that your x axis at the demand for goods and your y axis at the level of output and income. And you were able to see that your autonomous spending was the intercept and your uh, marginal propensity to consume gave you the slope of this curve. And then further, you were able to, to um, indicate the equilibrium point by showing where on this curve is the point where your, um, where your demand for goods is equal to your level of output and income, and that was your equilibrium point. And then you were also able to, um, to see that the change, this equilibrium point <clears throat> will change if your marginal propensity to consume change, because then the slope of this curve will change. So the for example, if he moves down, he will cross this line at a different spot or if the autonomous spending component changes because then this um, this um, graph will move up or down depending on what happens with this. Again, making your equilibrium point to change. OK, and then just um, and on this portion, you've got access, uh, excess demand. And on this area, you've got excess supply. So the economy will rec correct itself by moving towards this equilibrium point. <clears throat> so that was the gist of learning unit two, the goods market. Then the recap of the financial market. So the financial market shows that the level of output and income determines the demand for money. So remember in the, in the goods market, we said that your 
um, the, the demand for goods is determined by the level of outcome and income. And over here, you are learning now that the level of output and income um, determines the demand for money. So you um, learned about the demand for money equation, which we um, said was the demand for money is a function of the level of output and income and the interest rate. And the positive correlation as your level of output and income increases, if your demand for money increases, you are able to do more transactions or wanting or willing to. And then the negative relationship between the interest rate and the demand for money, because as your interest rate increases, your, um, your willingness to save maybe increase and your willingness to keep money in the mo most liquid form reduces, so your demand for money takes down.